Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Learning, Growing, Reading, Books for Early Readers. I'm Kelly Ferreira, Associate Editor for Books for Youth at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. Today's slide presentation and title list were included in the reminder email you received from Zoom one hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download the slides and title list by typing the URLs on this screen into your web browser. If you have any trouble, please contact us at webinars at booklistonline.com. The audience is in listen only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions, and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Booklist offers closed captioning on all webinars. To enable or disable them on your screen, please look for and click the Show Captions icon on the toolbar mentioned earlier. If you choose to enable set of titles, you can adjust the size of them at any time by selecting Caption Settings. And finally, Booklist expects all participants to maintain an atmosphere of respect and fairness. Anyone who violates the standard of behavior, including engaging in any form of harassment, may, at the discretion of the organizers, be immediately removed. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Jiyun Lee, Editor and Project Manager at Anik Press, Ellen Myrick, President and Chief Marketer at Publisher Spotlight, Emily Nuds, Curriculum and Instruction Specialist at Rosen Publishing, Christina Pulez, Senior Editor at Disruption Books, and Janet Potter, Marketing Director at Disruption Books. We will kick things off with Jiyun Lee. Jiyun is the Editor and Project Manager at Anik Press. She is always on the search for stories that empower young readers and reflect their experiences. She has a Master of Arts in Children's Literature from the University of British Columbia and lives in St. Catharines, Ontario with over 50 plants and two cats who are always trying to eat them. Thanks for being here, Jean. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Kelly. Hi, everyone. My name is Jean Lee. I'm the editor and project manager here at Annick Press. I'm just gonna turn my camera off for the presentation so I'm not super laggy. Um, so just for those of us that don't know us, we're an independent children's pu publisher based in Toronto, Ontario. We publish books for kids of all ages from board books, picture books, middle grade graphic novels, nonfiction, and books for young adults as well. Anuk was founded in 1975 on the principle that kids of all identities should see themselves represented in books. One of our still most popular books, The Paperback Princess by Robert Munch, remains a favorite due to its fearless and unapologetic way of challenging conventional no notions of identity and conformity and encouraging readers to find who they are on their own terms. And next year, we're actually celebrating our 50th anniversary, which is very exciting. Uh, next slide, please. I'm really excited to chat with you today about our amazing chapter book and early reader list here at Anik. I'm really excited particularly because um, chapter books Chapter books and early readers have been one of our editorial focuses in the past few years, and we're so happy with how our list has grown. All of our the books I get to share with you today explore important and poignant themes while also being full of expression and joy. So I'll get us started with the wonderful Nguyen Kids series by author Linda Trin and illustrator Clayton Nguyen. This series tells the perspective of three siblings, Anne, Liz, and Jacob, and how they each navigate themes of racism, gender stereotypes, microaggressions, and identity, all with a supernatural twist. In each book, the siblings discover the unique power of an object gifted to them by their beloved grandma, Noi. Although grandma has already passed away by the beginning of book one, the siblings each find a way to connect with her, their ancestors, and this helps them discover new aspects of their identities as well. I personally connected so much with this series from the very beginning, especially with how it explores the idea of identity and home not being about location, it's about the, uh, the connections to culture and family. Next slide, please. In the first three books, we take turns seeing from each sibling's perspective. Anne, Liz, and Jacob are all unique, absolutely endearing, and so relatable for young readers. And readers will be rooting them on as the characters each learn to stand up to bullies, problematic authority figures, and even well-intentioned family members as they figure out who they are. 
in the fourth and last book of the series, the kids actually get to go on vacation. They get to go to Vietnam for the first time and they get to stay in Grandma Noi's childhood home. As soon as they enter the house though, something doesn't feel right. In this last book, the siblings take turns telling their perspectives and work together to solve the mystery of their ancestors' gifts and this satisfying conclusion to the series. And exciting news is that we have a brand new fantasy chapter book series coming out from Linda Trin in 2026. Next slide, please. Next, I get to talk about the Salma series um, by the incredible Danny Ramadan and Anna Braun. Many of you might be familiar with the picture book Salma the Syrian Chef that came out in 2020 and has gone on to win numerous accolades. Salma makes a triumphant return in early chapter book format for slightly older readers. Lovers of the picture book can grow with Salma and join her on her new adventures. Three books are already on shelves and a fourth and possibly more are on the way. Next slide, please. Every book in this series has managed to make me cry and, but also just fill me with profound joy. In this series, Salma takes readers through themes of immigration, belonging, acceptance, body image, and family, while all being the strong, heartfelt, and determined main character that readers will remember from the picture book. For those of you that haven't read the picture book, um, Salma and her mama have just moved from Syria to Vancouver while her beloved Baba stayed behind. So the start of this new series, it's really exciting because Baba is finally joining them in Vancouver. And Salma is so excited, but she's also worried. What if he misses Syria so much that he leaves them again? Can Salma make space in her heart for two homes and can Baba? And in book two, the family grows as Salma is expecting a new baby sister. And can Salma figure out what it means to be a good sister before the baby arrives? And in book three, Salma takes on the pool as she dreams of becoming a champion swimmer like her hero, Olympian Yusra Mardini. But people are filled with criticism from older girls at school and women at her mosque saying mean comments about her body. But with the help of her close friends and family, the team that always has her back, Salma is ready to claim her place in the pool. Next slide, please. The book features gorgeous illustrations from Anna Braun that capture Danny Ramadan's beautiful words perfectly. They really make an, a dream team. Next slide, please. Another joyful title on our list is Mendy Boy by Zane Bandeli and Jani Balakumar. As soon as Tazib, our main character, is introduced to Mendy, he is hooked. Soon he's creating designs for all of his friends and families, and he dreams of becoming the most in-demand Mendy artist in town. But to his great surprise and hurt, his favorite uncle tells him that Mendy isn't for boys. But his art brings people joy, so how could it be wrong? Tazib doesn't want to, to disappoint his uncle, but when a crisis before his cousin's wedding puts his talents to the test, Tazib must find the courage to be his true creative self. Next slide, please. Jenny Bella Kumar's expressive, vibrant illustrations bring Tazib's designs and his community to life. This charming, affirming story by debut author Dane Bandali will have you celebrating creativity, artistic expression, and being unapologetically yourself. A fun fact is Zane Bandali was actually one of our mentees from our ANIC editorial mentorship program. Readers can learn more about Mendy at home with activities at the end of the book. Next slide, please. The newest member of our early chapter book list is the Sarah Ponicky Story Catcher series. This is a vibrant debut early chapter book series celebrating Cree culture and being true to herself. Sarah Ponicky has moved to the city from her home community with her mom, and it's the pits. She misses her kokum her best friend Eden, and the forest around her community. She's had a hard time making new friends at school, but at least she keeps in touch with Eden through meticulously written letters with very big words. After a particularly tough day, where she nearly loses her favorite stuffed animal, Ahasu, and is brushed off by her mom, Sarah finds herself transported to a magical forest powwow. Ahasu's Forest Powwow, the first book from debut children's author, Sita McMillan, features Cree words throughout the story and a note to the reader. As the White House, dynamic illustrations bring life this warm, charming, and funny introduction to Sarah Ponicky, the story catcher. Author Sita McMillan, who also was a mentee in our mentorship program, couldn't find children's books that focus on urban indigenous living. As a result, Sita set out to write her own series. The character of Sarah was inspired by Sita's own experiences growing up away from her community and starting her journey with her children to learn more about their indigenous culture. Sita is also an educator, and you'll see that emotional literacy, which has always been important for Sita, is a key theme throughout each of the books. Next slide, please. 
Book one is already out on shelves, and book two, Moskwa's TP Tales, will be published in March of next year, with book three coming out in 2026. Next slide, please. I'll end my presentation with a quick nod to our Munch Early Reader series, which have been a wonderful way to introduce the beloved stories to a new generation, filled with before and after reading activities, including phonics and spot the difference activities. Next slide, please. These books have been adapted by an educator into this early reader format and are filled with tips for supporting emerging readers for educators and caregivers. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. I've had so much fun sharing our titles. Please be sure to check out our social media profiles and our educator and resource guides on our website. And there's some videos featuring our authors on our YouTube channel as well. And um, I'm very happy, of course, to answer any follow-up questions by email. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Jiu. And now we'll be joined by Ellen Myrick. Ellen began Publisher Spotlight 15 years ago to promote and market independent and international children's book publishers. She recently co-chaired the IBBY Regional Conference in Nashville and has presented at ALA, ABA, and regional conferences. You can catch her on kidlit.tv with Rocco Steno for seasonal showcases featuring the highlights from 20 plus publishers. Follow at Pubs Spotlight on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Pinterest for more diverse, inclusive, and beautiful books from around the world for children and teens. Take it away, Ellen. Thanks, Kelly. And first, I want to say congratulations to Anik for 50 years. Wow, that is amazing. Well, I'm delighted to be here with today, and thank you so much for joining me. We're going to talk about some easy readers from lots of different publishers. And just so you know, we're going to be going in order of page count. So we're going to start with the very, very simplest, lowest page count, and with the highest. So next slide. First up, Nosy Crow and Cat Chat and Poppy, Puppy Talk. You know the secret to getting a kid excited about reading is giving them something they want to read about. These are books about how animals communicate with us. So if a kid has a favorite pet, this is a way they can communicate with that pet. I mean, what a great way to get a kid inspired to want to read. And in the very back of each of the books, and yes, this is the one for cat, and then we have the dogs. Um, there are ways that you that an adult can share with kids on how to interact with their pets. So this is a series from Nosy Crow, and they just do such a beautiful job. And it is written by a veterinarian, of course, because you have to do that. And you want to have a guide to your pet's body language. I can tell you, I actually learned some stuff from this. And I've been living with cats for at least 60 years. So there you go. It's very humorous and also incredibly accurate. So, and fantastic back matter, as I mentioned before. So that's Nosy Crow, Cat Chat Puppy Doc. And let's go on to our next title, which is I Heard a Bird. So this is from Scallywag Press, and this is another very simple, um, beautiful lyrical rhyming language. We have a little girl who hears a bird, and the bird is chased away, ironically, by two cats. Ooh, I should have said spoiler alert. Ah. Anyway, she follows the bird to try to find out what's going on. And as she does that, it's an exercise in meditation, in music, in mindfulness, I mean, how often do you see the word silence in a book, right? Well, that's what this one in, indulges uh, the reader with. It's part of a series. We have we planted a pumpkin and we found a seed. Gosh, I wonder if we planted a pumpkin might be especially appropriate for the coming month. <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to decide for yourself. So the, this, as I said, is coming to us from, um, from Scallywag Press. Rob Ramsden always does books that really do a beautiful job of portraying nature in so many different ways. So that is from the In the Garden series. Next up, we have Bunny Girl. I don't know if you're a fan of easy reader graphic novels, but I've got a lot for you today. And we're starting off with Bur Bunny Girl from Burbay Publishing based in Australia. But don't worry, everything is in American English. So don't expect OURs. So we have this beautiful little, okay, let's just say it. If you have kids who are fans of Hello Kitty, they are going to eat this up with a spoon. They're going to love it so much. Bunny Girl um, is so kind and thoughtful with her friends. And this is her very her very gentle adventures that she has with them. Her, her superpower is kindness. And can't we all use a little bit more kindness in the world? I love the way that this is done in a graphic novel format for kids who may not be familiar with graphic novels. So this is a great first graphic novel experience. Very easy to tell where you're going to be going from one panel to the next and understand how the story moves. So great for visual literacy as well as you know learning how to read. So very cute, quirky panel 
else. And just so much fun. This is the second in the series, Treehouse Friends. So yeah, she's had a, two adventures so far and more to come. And that is from Burbay. Next up, Really Bird, really lucky. This is coming to us from Red Comet Press. And you may recognize the name of the author, Harriet Ziefert, because she has written 500 books. Yeah, 500 books. So what we have here is Really Bird and all of Really Bird's, you know, fantastic friends getting into adventures. They find this box. So many things you can do when you have a magical red box, right? So they use their imaginations to think of all the ways they can use a box, how the box got there, what, what uh, kinds of things might be in the box, what they can do with the box. And it's just really fun. Um, yes, Really Bird is really fun. Yeah, you saw that coming, didn't you? I love the way that it's not only a graphic novel, but it also has ideas on how kids can take it to the next level. Here are all the books in the series, so seven so far, and there is another one to come after this. So this is uh, coming to us, as I said, from Red Comet Publishing. And you know what? There's even a stuffed plush really bird so if you have kids who just need that one little extra thing to get them excited about reading you know they can get the read the really bird plush put that in your library your classroom and then have the books and you know just a, good to have a reading buddy so there you go next up the rescue's best day ever this is a new series uh this is the second in a series from red comet press and there are so many yeah have you noticed i have a lot of dog and cat books just seems to be the season for that so the rescues are about three rescue animals, three rescue pet dogs that come into a family. In the first one, we discuss, we learn the story of how they found each other and how their family found them and how they got used to being in that new space. The thing I love about the rescue pets is uh, the rescues is that it has three stories in each book. So this is perfect for a reader who's becoming newly confident. And it is inspired by the author and the, uh, the authors, uh, father and son authors, by their own rescue pets. So you may know Tommy Greenwald. He writes the Good Sports League for Abrams Books. And I think these illustrations are so charming. She Hope Hate did these, and she is an illustrator. Watch, they are just lovely. The language is very simple, but it's compelling stories. And again, kids love stories about animals. So this is Best Day Ever from the Rescues. Next up. Okay, if you're talking about easy reader graphic novels, you have to talk about Toon Books, right? They have been doing easy reader graphic novels since before they were cool. Of course, their books have always been cool, so you have to say that. Um, Toon Books was founded by Françoise Mouly, who is the art director of The New Yorker. And boy, she knows what she's doing. And these are just so gorgeous. Ben Sears is one of their rising stars. This is a story about a kid who's got an older sister, sibling relationships, who is kind of going through a rough patch. She, she kind of looks a little bit emo to me. But she's going through some emotional times and he wants to do something to cheer her up. So he takes his recorder, his camera equipment, and he goes to a haunted house and records the sound. So we have some onomatopoeia in here, which is always fun to do when you're having a graphic novel experience. And he records those for his sister. Also, you'll see their tips on how to read comics with kids in the back of every one of the two books. This is a level two, so you can see what goes into that. 300 to 700 words, short sentences, lots of repetition, one to four panels per page. I love how explicit they are and what is included in their levels. So you'll find this with all of the two books. And if you didn't know this, a lot of the backlist for Tune is also available in paperback now. So, and their backlist is substantial. These are available from Astra Books, and uh, Tune is available from Astra. And yeah, please check out Hearing Things from Ben Sears. Next up, we have A Day with Moose by Claire LeBourg. This is a new publisher to you, I bet. This is only their third season of doing children's book publishers. They do everything in translation. It's an uh, illustrated chapter book and Moose is just you know this wonderful little green and white striped character and he he just is having his day and uh, enjoying his usual routines and suddenly they all get upended when Barnacle which is such a great name um, for a character comes into the picture but these illustrations are incredibly adorable this is from France originally and I should say that Transit as I mentioned does translated books they published last year's Nobel Prize winner. So that gives you an idea of how good their taste is. Um, as I said, by Claire LeBourg, translated by Sophie Lewis, who does a beautiful job. This is the first in a series in this chapter book series. And there are uh, several different adventures in each one. And Walrus shows up. All plans go awry. 
So you'll want to check out everything that is coming to us from Transit Children's Editions. I just think that they are doing amazing, amazing stuff. And I love these beautiful, soft illustrations. We have a lot of unlikely friendship stories. I don't know if you've noticed that. So speaking of unlike, unlikely friendships, our next one is Penguin and Panda. If you had to ask kids what two animals they are most excited about or they're most interested in, I bet at least half of them would pick one of these two animals, penguins or pandas. This is coming to us from Marvel Press, and Brenda Meyer has done lots of books. In fact, she does the Ruby's Big Idea series from, from um, Scholastic. And this, is, again, is an illustrated graphic novel series. This is the third. So if you like this, know that there are two more and yet more to come. And in this case, they're having a really fun time with a great big winter party. And look at these great fun facts. Did you know that pandas have six fingers? I mean, I didn't know that. If, if you didn't know that, feel free to mention that in the, in the questions. Anyway, fascinating stuff. So stuff for the nonfiction kids and beautiful graphic novels for those fans. <laughs> Please excuse my cough. And the, this shows you the other two books so far in the series. And the author is an elementary school teacher. So you know that she knows she is taught, she is writing about things that she knows that kids are interested in. And that is to, coming to us from Marble Press based in California. Next up, we have Princess Minna. Okay, this is another one coming to us from Nosy Crow, and I love these books. So these are illustrated chapter books, but look at the color and life on these pages. They are so beautiful. Princess Minna is kind of, any Jane Austen fans out there, if she's kind of the Emma Woodhouse of the illustrated chapter book set. She is always trying to fix everything. She's she's trying to match things up. She's trying to make sure everything is going the way they should be going. And I just love the fact that every one of these spreads is so beautifully illustrated. So in the first one, she uh, she she has to wake a sleeping prince before nightfall. So yes, it's a little bit of a twist on the usual tale. And in the second book, in the unicorn mix-up, she just figured she gets confused on what she needs to do. So she ends up fighting the unicorn, kissing the dragon, and taming a frog. So these are incredibly delightful, two in the series to begin with, and many, many, many more to come. Excuse me, I apologize. So that is Princess Minna. And moving on, we can see some of the illustrations from that. We have the fighting puppy, and I'm going to mute myself for just half a second. Thank you. I apologize for that. And this is from Holly Webb. Holly Webb has written so many, there's so many rescued kittens and puppies because of Holly Webb. So thank you, Holly Webb, for doing all that good work. Um, there are at least a hundred of these, I think, out in the world and they circulate like crazy. So these are just some of the more recent ones. Here's a fun fact. The puppy ones come out in the fall and the kitten ones come out in the spring. So how fun is that? In this case, we have a little girl who is vacationing with her family and she finds an abandoned puppy and she has to earn its trust. And these have really, really charming illustrations as well. Sorry, next up we have One Wise Sheep. I think Gecko Press is so good at illustrated chapter books, especially funny ones. I hope you've noticed that a lot of the books I'm showing you today are just funny. Kids need something to laugh at, you know? And this is for a slightly more confident reader. And what we have here is the nativity story told by a somewhat snarky sheep. So it is great fun. This is the same team that brought us Duck's Backyard and the um, illustrator of When Dad's Hair Took Off, which is one of my very favorite books that came out last year. Great. And thank you. That's coming to us from Gecko Press, who is distributed now by Learner Press. So great, great fun. If you have kids who just love to laugh, this is a great way to start. And lastly, I want to tell you about Every Cherry. This is coming to us from Sweet Cherry. And these are books that are meant so an entire class can enjoy a story at the same time. So it empowers special the special education community. These are first two, these are two in the very first round that they have coming. They have symbolized classics and easier classics. So everybody in the kit in the class can be looking at the same story and on the same page but they can encounter the story in different ways. So as you can see on the symbolized classics, it's almost a, re it is a rebus approach. So here you can see how this works. So a kid who is not as confident about reading can learn that. And then from the easier classics, you can see that there are simple, simple sentences. It's like a pretty friendly font and there's a glossary and they have much, much more simple information on those pages. So 
I apologize for coughing so much. Thank you so much for listening to me today. You can contact me at Ellen at PublisherSpotlight.com to find out about these or anything. If you would like to see um, digital samples of any of these, please put that in the in, uh, email me at Ellen at Publisher Spotlight, and I'd love to fix you up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ellen. We'll now hear from Emily Nuds. Emily is a curriculum and instruction specialist for Rosen Publishing. She recently completed her 20th year teaching where she spent nine years as a literary coach. During this time, she provided ongoing professional development in the science of reading, worked with early and struggling readers and worked with classroom teachers to ensure best practices were being used to meet the needs of all learners. Welcome, Emily. Hi, thanks so much for having me. My name is Emily Nuds, and I've spent the last 20 years teaching young learners to read using a variety of approaches and materials. Within the past 10 years, I've studied the research included in the term science of reading to better understand all that goes into learning to read. I'm excited to share some of that knowledge along with some supportive materials with you today. Here you can see a number of models that are referred to quite often when studying the science of reading. The simple view of reading, Scarborough's reading rope, and the active view of reading. The simple view of reading takes the task of reading comprehension and simplifies the description as the product of two factors, word recognition and language comprehension. The idea is simple. Readers must be able to decode all of the words in front of them and understand what the words mean in order for reading comprehension to occur. If either factor is weak, reading comprehension is compromised. Scarborough's rope shows all the skills required for strong word recognition and language comprehension. This model helps us as educators guarantee that we are teaching all parts of the rope to ensure a comprehensive approach to reading instruction. And the active view of reading includes similar pieces to the simple view of reading in Scarborough's rope, but goes a bit further to also highlight the importance of engagement and executive functioning skills. Here at Rosen, we're delighted to offer a wide array of materials to support all parts of the early reader. The Decodable series was created to help early readers build their word recognition skills. After a structured phonics lesson, the Decodables provide students with the opportunity to apply their decoding skills in connected text. Titles include a combination of illustrations, photos, or both in fiction or nonfiction. Educators' guides are also available. Here you can see the six sets included in our original series, The Decodables, which we are proud to say has been added to the Reading Leads list of approved decodable text sources. These titles span phonics patterns commonly taught in pre-kindergarten through second grade. On the bottom, you can see our new expansion series, Codebreakers. This series was designed to support readers who have mastered basic decoding skills and are moved into the later alphabetic and consolidated phase of reading. Through carefully selected words and high interest topics, each book allows upper elementary readers the opportunity to practice advanced phonics patterns and morphemes in engaging age appropriate texts. This set of 10 nonfiction decodable books focuses on developing readers' fluency skills while building knowledge as they progress through these beautiful, informative, and entertaining books. Our decodables and code breakers follows a systematic and sequential scope and sequence, building from basic patterns to more advanced. When reading decodables, it's important to read them in a sequential order as the scope and sequence is cumulative. That is, each book only includes patterns that have been previously taught. On the front of each book, we've included a badge to indicate the book number within the set. The back of each book includes a series description, a description of the particular set, and the titles included in the set with a focus phonics patterns. There's also a convenient QR code that takes you directly to our free structured phonics lesson plan that aligns with each title. Our interiors include simple text with illustrations or photos. As the series progresses, you'll notice that more grade appropriate text features like captions, maps, close-ups, etc., are included. This slide gives you a closer look of what's available with our free downloadable educator's guide. Each book in the decodables and code breakers comes with an explicit structured phonics lesson plan, complete with the printable manipulatives and graphic organizers needed for each lesson. 
These lessons are a great supplement to any core phonics program or can be used for intervention purposes. Rosen Publishing's imprints offer extensive collections to help early readers build knowledge on topics. Research shows that the more a reader knows about the topic they are reading about, the higher their comprehension level will be. Providing early readers with books on common topics is a way to build knowledge while teaching a number of foundational skills. Gareth Stevens' Beautiful Birds and Let's Look at Lizards are collections of 12 books and six books respectively, featuring common and high interest birds and lizards. Targeting pre-K through second graders, each book contains information about common subtopics like habitat, diet, caring for the young, and other behaviors, allowing even the youngest readers to learn about the similarities and differences of each animal in order to build knowledge on the topic. Similarly, Animal Bodies, a collection of six books by Gareth Stevens, explores the body parts of a variety of animals through beautiful photographs and simple sentences. These books are also useful when teaching simple sentence structure and the use of adjectives. Continuing with the theme of building knowledge about animals, Gareth Stevens' Leveled Readers, targeting students in grades one and two, offers two six book collections, Creature Features, Classify Animals, and Electric Animals. Creature features classify animals teaches students to identify what makes each animal unique, from the wings of a bird to the gills of a fish. Each book features one animal family and calls out important identifiers for readers to look for. Electric animals allows young readers to learn about the many ways animals use or even create electricity. And finally, PK readers two cute baby, animal, baby animals hones in on the facts related to young animals. And although I've just highlighted our latest collections to support knowledge building on the topic of animals, our collections of materials to support knowledge building are endless. PK Readers Heroes of Native American History from Power Kids Press, for example, targets readers in grades one and two and focuses on leaders within the Native American community. Each of the six books shares the life story of a Native American hero. And new this fall, Britannica's Discover More, a look at weather and climate and exploring life science, helps readers build their content and vocabulary knowledge on science topics common to most curriculums. At Rosen, we are happy to take any school district's curriculum, published or homegrown, and develop a collection of materials to support the learning of the curriculum. Our books on social-emotional learning are multi-purpose. They can be used to teach early learners about themselves, their feelings, and how to best manage big emotions that sometimes take over our bodies. They can also be used to support the language development of English language learners, supplying precise vocabulary and for specific feelings. Also, these books are a wonderful support for students with autism. The clear and accurate pictures provide specific examples of emotions and feelings with precise language to describe what is often internal and unseen. Norwood House Press's Big Feelings series includes eight titles supporting early readers and their ability to recognize and name feelings so they can begin to discuss and manage them. PK Readers, Making Friends with My Emotions is a six book series offering insight into six different emotions and describes what it means to feel each way. The book shares ways readers can manage the feelings when they arise. And finally, Power Kids Press offers a new fall series, What Happens Next? Dealing with Life Changes. This set goes beyond the outsider perspective used in many books to reach out to young students dealing with issues, including an autism diagnosis, severe allergies, or other challenges or changes in their lives. Sensitive practical text will give kids honest, age-appropriate information on what they're dealing with, and a hopeful matter-of-fact tone will encourage them to deal effectively with the changes in their lives while understanding that they can reach out for help if they need to. The active view of reading model includes self-regulation, which includes motivation and engagement as a contributing factor to overall reading comprehension. A reader's engagement with a text at hand is as important as readability and topic knowledge. Our imprints have a wide selection of engaging materials that will hold the attention of our early readers. Gareth Stevens' Leveled Reader series, Nature's Grossest, hooks early readers with shocking titles like Chicks Eat Puke, and rabbits eat their skin and hold their readers' attention while sharing facts about animals and their interesting yet sometimes gross adaptations. There are 18 titles in this series and it targets readers in grades one through three. 
Another series by Gareth Stevens, new this fall, highlights the inspirational stories of the hard work and dedication and accomplishments of seven female athletes who are the GOATs, greatest of all time in their respective sports. Readers will be excited to learn about sport, sports greats like Caitlin Clark and the amazing Simone Biles. It's important when planning for early readers to consider the overwhelming body of research known as the science of reading. This research illustrates all that contributes to learning how to read, word recognition skills, language comprehension skills and knowledge building, social and emotional learning and self-regulation, and active engagement. We are happy to su suggest materials to support all areas of reading instruction, please feel free to reach out with all of your questions about supporting early readers or to inquire about curriculum aligned materials by emailing me at emilyn at rosenpub.com. Thank you so much, Emily. Our final presentation will come from the Disruption Books team. Christina Pulez is a senior editor at Disruption Books. Before joining Disruption, Christina was an editor at Albert Whitman and Company, Simon & Schuster, and Union Square and & Company, the publishing division of Barnes & Noble. When she's not working on books, Christina loves exploring Chicago parks with her husband and daughter. Janet Potter is the marketing director of Disruption Books. Before joining Disruption, she was the events and trade marketing manager at Independent Publishers Group and was an independent bookseller for 10 years. Thanks for being here, Christina and Janet. The floor is yours. Thank you, Kelly, and hello, everyone. So Janet and I are here to tell you about two picture books that Disruption is publishing this January. Um, the first is called Our Differences Make Us Stronger, How We Heal Together. And then the second is a, a Spanish translation, which I'll tell you a little bit more about um, later. So this is a picture book written by Lejeune Montgomery Tabron, who is the president and CEO of the W.K. Kellogg Foundation and the books are published in collaboration with the foundation. A little more about them, the Kellogg Foundation was created in 1930 by the breakfast cereal innovator, Will Keith Kellogg, uh, with the mission of helping every child, regardless of race, uh, thrive in their community. And their focus has always been, you know, over the past almost 100 years, has always been on the well-being of children and families. And one of their biggest recent initiatives has been their racial healing work working with the communities they, they serve to come together and get through, get past differences uh, in one way with discussions called healing circles. So they wanted to publish a book that could bring these to this topic of racial healing down to a child's level and be used in classrooms and communities, particularly the communities that they serve. So these two books are being released um, on January 14th in, to coincide with the Kellogg Foundation's National Day of Racial Healing, which takes place the Tuesday after Martin Luther King Jr. Day, so the following week. Next slide, please. A little bit more about the contents of the book. The, there's back matter that has information about Lejeune's life and the origin and practice of racial healing circles, as well as some discussion questions for teachers and parents and caregivers. And uh, we've got the levels up here. The book is intended for ages five to nine, Lexile level of 590L with an interest level of K through five and an estimated guided reading level of N. Next slide, please. So a little bit more about the creators. Lejeune Montgomery Tabron, she is the first African-American and the first female president and CEO of the Kellogg Foundation. She's an international thought leader. She's named uh, by Inside Philanthropy as one of the 50 most influential women in philanthropy. And she lives in Battle Creek, Michigan, where the foundation is headquartered. And then our wonderful illustrator is Tamika Grooms. She has been an illustration mentee in the We Need Diverse Books program. And she's the illustrator of Senator Raphael Warnock's picture book, Put Your Shoes On and Get Ready. Next slide, please. So to get into the story a bit, Our Differences is loosely based on Lejeune's childhood. She was a young black girl growing up in Detroit in the 1960s. She had a best friend and next door neighbor, Jennifer, who was white, but in life and in the story, that's not something that mattered to them. Um, Lejeune and Jennifer always sit together in the lunchroom at school and they don't really notice that the other kids are sitting with people who look like them. That's how we start to talk about race in the book. 
Then Jennifer moves away and Rajun realizes that she and Jennifer were kind of unique in their friendship. And now she's not sure where to sit at lunch. She wonders if she has to sit with the black kids because she's black. She likes that group of kids, but she just it just feels strange to her to sit face that sit that way. So she ends up eating alone in the classroom, but of course her teacher finds her pretty quickly. Um, and her teacher is Mr. Stokes. He's based on a real life teacher of Lejeune's. And when he realizes what's going on, he starts the class on a healing exercise. Next slide, please. So first Mr. Stokes mixes up their seats at lunch, and then he gathers everyone in a circle to talk about what happened in a simulation of a racial healing circle. So this starts as a lot of healing circles can with something called conocimiento, which is a getting to know you conversation meant to point out our shared humanities. Next slide, please. In this case, the class talks about their names and where they come from, and they're able to find connections with each other that way. And then they talk about why they were sitting in groups like this at lunch, why it was hard to switch things up. Um, and they don't solve all of their problems. That's that's unrealistic, but they start the conversation, which mirrors what happens in an actual racial healing circle. Next slide, please. So at the same time that this is happening at school, a new family has moved into Jennifer's old house next door. Um, Ava and her family are Mexican American and Lejeune finds herself grappling with their differences. Ava has just has different interests than Jennifer did and the food her family eats feels different. So even while Lejeune is trying to help everyone unite across differences at school, she's confronted with something different at home and is learning to accept it, all with the support of her mom and the rest of her family. Next slide, please. And there's a little preview of the back matter with the real picture of little Lejeune from the 60s um, and, the, and the end of the story with Lejeune and her mom. Next slide, please. So yes, as I mentioned, we are publishing this simultaneously in English and Spanish. The Spanish edition is Nuestras Diferencias Nos Hacen Más Fuertes. Um, and it will have all the same specs and be released on the same day um, in print and digital. And I think I'm gonna pass it over to Janet for the next slide. Yeah, thank you, Christina. I just wanted to note that um, we, this author will be doing um, a ton of press when the book comes out. She is simultaneously publishing a memoir for adults called How We Heal about her life and work. So we know already she's gonna be on the Jennifer Hudson show. She's gonna be in Time Magazine. Um, we're setting up lots of other stuff that she'll be doing. So it should be a fairly high profile release. Uh, we do have lots of galleys of this book available. It's on NetGalley um, if you'd like to read it there. If you'd like a physical galley, feel free to email me. Um, my email's on the slide there. If you happen to be in Michigan, I'll be at the Michigan Library Association uh, in a few weeks with stuff. And then we also have um, posters for this book, which you can see uh, in the right corner of the slide. It has some of the interior art from the book, as well as then both of the book covers, the English and Spanish, um, if you'd like any of that for your library or the tote bag. Again, just reach out. We'd love to send you anything um, to support this book. And I think that's all from us. All right. Thank you so much, Christina and Janet. And a huge, huge thank you to all of today's wonderful panelists. Um, tomorrow, all attendees will receive an email containing links to today's video recording, slide presentation, title list, and a certificate of completion. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like those you see here. And attention all library workers, educators, booksellers, and students. We have a special subscription offer exclusive to webinar attendees. Subscribe to Booklist now and stay on top of the latest books, glean readers advisory guidance, and get collection development advice through print and digital editions, a booklist, and access to Booklist Online. Plus, our Booklist subscription now comes with free digital and shareable copies of our new product for patrons, Booklist Reader. Scan the QR code or visit our website for more details. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. A huge thank you to our panelists and to our sponsors, Anik Press, Publisher Spotlight, Rosen Publishing, and Disruption Books. This concludes today's webinar. See you next time.